Hi, I'm Lucy. Hi, I'm Ellie. And we're Lunar Dive School. So today we're going to be talking about how you speak underwater. So this will be an interactive guide to scuba sign language. If you've ever tried to talk underwater, you probably look something like this. This is because unlike marine animals who have evolved myriad ways to communicate underwater, we are land animals with vocal cords designed to work in the air on land. In the old days of diving, when brave men and a few women donned heavy metal diving helmets and went searching for treasure, pearls and seafood, divers would communicate with their on-land assistants via a series of pools on their lifeline. And later, a diving telephone um, was actually developed, um, as you can see in this picture. So when Jacques Cousteau, the famous scuba diver, the guy that made scuba diving what it is, invented a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, which is what scuba stands for, in 1942, it became apparent that hand sig signals were going to become essential for underwater comms. As with many other things that we enjoy recreationally today, it was the US military who established the underwater hand signals that we use today. So we're going to run through some of the basics that you're likely to see whilst you're beginning to learn to dive. So the first one that you'll see a lot in diving is, are you okay? And that is a call and response. So if I say to Lucy, are you okay? She'll respond underwater, I am okay. Another one that you'll see a lot underwater is, you watch me. So when you're learning to dive, you'll have your instructor or your dive master demonstrating skills to you. And to make sure that you're all watching, they'll say, you watch me. That's a very simple one just to basically say, pay attention. Sometimes when you're learning to dive, it can be a bit overwhelming or you might find yourself getting a little bit flustered or perhaps maybe you just need to take a breather before you move on to the next skill. So something that your dive master or your instructor might say to you is breathe slowly. So if Lucy's getting really excited because she's seeing a fish or perhaps there's a manta ray swimming by, I might say, slow down, breathe slowly, Lucy. Uh, with scuba diving, of course, you're underwater. So you start at the surface and you go down. But you might want to look at something that's a bit higher up from you or perhaps your guide or instructor is suggesting that. So what they'll say is they'll literally do a thumbs up to go up or a thumbs down to go down. So if Ellie says to me, are you okay? And she replies this, that means to me that she wants to go up. So what did we say before? If I ask if you're okay, you do this in response. If you do a thumbs up, it means you want to go up. Uh, again, whilst we're doing our skills, whilst you're learning, we will start at the surface and we'll say to come down, to get down onto your knees. And then we might say to go up to finish the skill and we'll talk about it after that. Whilst you're learning your skills, your instructor will demonstrate the skill and you will have to copy them to show that you know what you're doing. If your instructor isn't quite happy with it, or perhaps you need to just get it, you need to perfect it even more, they'll tell you to repeat. So this is your, this is the hand signal for repeat. So do it over again. And finally, if something's really awesome, really cool, really great, you might have done a really good job on your skills, or you might have seen something awesome, you do this, like awesome dude. Now that we've got over, gone over the basics of the types of instructions, types of hand signals that your instructor, your guide, your buddy might give you when you're learning, and also when you're a qualified diver, we need to go over some of the safety things, because diving is super safe as long as you dive within your limits and you follow all of the protocols, and some of those things involve hand signals to make sure that you and everybody else that's with you is happy, safe, and accounted for. So... If you have a problem, because sometimes we have problems, we might have a pain, we might have an issue with a piece of equipment, so that we can deal with it as quickly as possible, we need to be able to tell our guides, our instructors, our buddies what the problem is. So, the fir first off, the hand signal for problem is this, which is something you probably use in real life. You might be like, oh, it's a bit dodgy, it's a bit iffy. You definitely will once you become a scuba diver, but this is, that means that there's, there's a problem. If you have a problem with a piece of equipment, you do this and you point at the piece of equipment, wherever it might be, and then your buddy, your instructor, your guide can come over and help fix it for you. 
Uh, if you've got a problem with something on your body, again, you point to the problem and then they can also deal with, the, with that issue. So it might be that you feel sick or you might have a problem with your ears with equalising and they can help manage um, the alleviation of that. Uh, your guide and your instructor might also tell you to stay with your buddy or they might ask you a question like, where is your buddy? So the hand signal for buddy is this. It looks like this. So they might point at people to say buddy up or where is your buddy? That's how it works. Perhaps there's something really cool happening. There's a fish going by or for safety reasons, there might be a boat being close by. They might say, look at, look at. So it's a great way of saying look at that fish or look at that boat. That's the hand signal for boat. Uh, another really important one to know is the strong current. So you might come across a current when you're diving. It might be unexpected. You might know that it's going to be there when you're entering the water from what the surface water is doing. But this is a signal for strong currents. A nice big fist into a flat palm there. So we've gone over the basics of communications in terms of what your instructor might say to you and how you respond to them. But now we're going to get to the fun bit. The main reason that most divers go diving is to look at the amazing wildlife. And I say most divers because some prefer to look at a wreck or um, something type of topographic. So that's basically rocks and things underwater. And the wildlife, the fish, the corals, etc. is a secondary thing. But we still need to be able to communicate about fish because some fish you need to be careful of. We're not worrying about sharks here. There are some little poisonous fishes that we need to be careful of. Um, and also some get, get quite territorial. So you don't want to disturb them if they're nesting or if they're mating. Understandably, we are visiting their world. So we have to just make sure that we know how to communicate about different fishes. But mostly you want to see the awesome stuff. So that's, that's why we're getting to the fun bit. As you'll have probably realised with some of the hand signals that we've touched on already... Most of the hand signals with, with, uh, for fish are obvious. They obviously explain what you're trying to depict. Um, so just as this was problem, that kind of makes sense that that's problem. It's kind of obvious that this is clownfish because this is what clowns do in the circus. So Nemo, your, the famous fish, is actually a clownfish. So this is what you do for a clownfish. Another really common critter to see underwater is a moray eel. Uh, they always have really miserable faces, so me and Ellie might do this to each other. But actually, the hand signal for a moray eel is this. Um, a blue spotted ray, which you'll see in the Red Sea very commonly, um, is this. So you poke onto the back of your hand the blue spots, which you have to imagine are there, Everyone's favourite animal to see under the sea is a turtle. So this is the hand signal for turtle. This bit here, the hands and the body, and this is their fins. The one that lots of people are excited to see when they're diving is shark. So that's a sign for shark, just one big hand as their main dorsal fin. You might also see a hammerhead shark if you're super lucky, and the sign for that is a little bit different because hammerheads have those really unique shaped heads. So you hold two fists up to either side of your heads. That's hammerhead shark. As Lucy said, lots of fish hand signals are really similar to how the fish behave or how they look. So you might be able to guess what this one is. This is an octopus. You might also see something like this because they just have like lovely tentacles that can also sometimes be used for cuttlefish as well, which is obviously part of the same family. One that you see again a lot in the Red Sea and a lot in the Caribbean as well is this one here, and that's for lionfish. They have these really beautiful spines all over their body and they can actually be poisonous. As well as sharks, another big fish that you might see underwater is a jack or a tuna. So a tuna is a type of jack. You do this because it's like you're jacking up a car. If you know for sure it's a tuna, you can do this because it's like you're opening a can of tuna using an old school um, tin opener. Manta ray, not to see one of those, uh, but manta ray is this. But basically any big ray, you flap your arms because they flap their wings like birds. So you, you haven't seen an eagle underwater, you've seen a manta ray or another big ray. Um, one of my favourite things to see is a crab. This is a crab. And it also works for a little shrimp as well because they have teeny little uh, grabby handies as well. Um, you can also use it for lobster, 
Um, but sometimes people use this as well. Um, a really cool fish to see is a barracuda. Um, so you put your hand out like this and you do this with your hand because barracuda have massive big stripes on their body and they're long and thin. So that's barracuda. So quite a territorial fish depending on where you are in the world and what type of trigger fish you're seeing is the trigger fish. They have a super simple hand signal, which is this, which just looks like you're pulling the trigger on a gun basically. They come in lots and lots of different subspecies. So red tooth ones, which are about this small, or you can get Titan trigger fish, which are known to be quite territorial. And then the final one that we're gonna show you is just for a frog fish, which is this sign here. They have two little, they're two side fins. Um, they're two pectoral fins, actually more like legs, and they'll use them to balance on the bottom of the sea floor. You can see in some pictures here. Um, and they are often really, really hard to spot. They're very, very well camouflaged. Even like giant ones, which can grow up to be the size of my head, can be really hard to spot unless someone's pointing it right at you. But that's a sign for frogfish. So we're gonna show you how some of these hand signals might work all together in a few different underwater sentences. So we'll be signing to each other and then we'll explain what they mean, but perhaps you can play along at home. You can practice the hand signals and guess what the meanings are. Uh, Lucy, this is the first one's for you. Where is your body? Uh, come up to my level, look at the boat. Perfect. Here's one for you, Lucy. <laughs> um, come over to me and kneel down to look at the frogfish. Yeah. There's a big shark over there. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the basic dive signals that you'll be experiencing as you learn to dive and as you first get into the water. So hopefully you found that useful. You can start to familiarize yourself with those. And if you're interested in getting in the water with us, then get in contact with Luna Dive School and we can organize a try dive event for you and any of your friends. Yep, to keep up to date with all of our content, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. Um, and just get in touch if you've got any other questions that you'd like to uh, find out a little bit more about scuba diving.